Hey everybody, welcome to Code Club Junior. I'm Dina and I'm really excited to get uh, started with another Code Club challenge today and we're gonna try to create a game. So we're gonna review just a few of the block coding that we went over last time. If you were using a program such as Scratch Junior, these are some of the codes that you might see and use in, in building games in that program. You can see this um, arrow over here points to the right and this little one underneath would tell us to move one space to the right or the, the object that you were moving in your game would move one space to the right. The second one would mean that the object would turn around once one unit or space. And this last one would be a jumping move and the object would, would jump two times. There are some other event uh, codes that you would also see. For example, this green flag would be a signal to go uh, or the object to move forward or start. And the hand signal would be a signal for the object to stop. So our challenge today is we're going to use some of these codes to help create a board game or some type of game. And the goal is to, for a player or the object to reach the end mark with the least amount of codes or moves. And we'll talk a little bit more about how to do that. So the first thing is, is you wanna make your game board and you could use a piece of paper and make a grid. We, st we used an eight by eight grid. That means that there's eight squares across and eight squares down. We decided to use chalk for ours. You can also use other things to make your, your game board, such as egg cartons, um, playing cards. You could flip those over and make a grid out of your cards. Um, or you can just use paper. So the next thing you're going to do is you want to choose a starting point and an end point for your game. So we just chose a green green color for our start and a red uh, color for our stop stopping point. Then we added bonus spaces and with the bonus spaces we got to choose a reward when you landed on those spaces. Um, and this is um, an introduction to if then statements and it's something that you will use in coding a lot. So if a person lands on this blue spot then something happens. Um, so we decided that in our game that if when somebody landed on this blue spot that they would get squirted with a water gun. It was a really hot day and we thought that that would be fun. So, um, so this is one of their blue, stops, blue spaces as you can see in the picture. Um, these were the, the spots if you landed on them you got squirted with the, the water gun. We also created penalty spaces to make the game just a little bit harder. You had to avoid these spaces. And if you landed on one of these, they look like little Pac-Man objects right here, um, you had to go back to the last blue space that you, are, you were at. So this is another example of a if-then statement. If you land on the Pac-Man, then you are penalized. You have to go back. And our penalty, we made create a little piranhas. We call them piranhas. And if they had to, if they landed on the piranha, they had to go back to the blue space. And this is what they look like. Then you need to figure out how many players they're going to be in your game and who what will rep represent your players. We just real used real players to play our chalkboard game, but you could use um, other items as well. Um, we chose to have two players in our game. One person played the role of the programmer and gave instructions, and the other one played the role of the robot and moved um, according to the instructions the programmer gave. But at the bottom here, there's some pictures about things. If you're just doing a, a paper board game, you could use Lego figures or uh, other action figures or even pieces to another board game that you have to, to uh, represent your players. Then you need to figure out what moves or codes that are going to be allowed in your game. We decided just to keep it simple. So we decided an up arrow would mean move forward, uh, down arrow would mean move backward, 
this arrow would mean move to the right and the other arrow pointing the other direction would mean move to the right. We set, we made the rule that uh, one turn, an arrow counts as one turn, but the player can move up to five spaces during that, that turn. So, and then you need to decide how to keep score. We just decided that the, whoever is the programmer will write down the, the arrows or the codes on a notepad first, and then give the robot instructions on how to move. So at the end of the game, they would count up the arrows to see how many how many uh, spaces they had to move or how many uh, codes they had to use to get the character to the end of the game. All right, so this is how we played our river run game and Carl, my son, helped us out with that and Kara, she's on the camera. It's a little bit jiggly, but we had a lot of fun doing this. So we hope you like that, liked it too. Okay, we are going to actually do our game. It's called River Run. We've got an eight by eight square here. Um, Carl is going to start on the top left so we can see our starting point, Carl. Our green flag, that means go. That's our code for go. And we're going to stop at the red hexagon. That means stop. Carl is, I'm going to give him instructions. I'm the programmer. Carl is the computer, the robot. He's going to carry out the instructions. And I'm going to guide him through this maze. I'm going to try to get him to land on every blue spot. When he lands on the blue spot, he gets to be refreshed by a squirt of water. If I put him on the white spot, that's a bad, that's a piranha spot. He has to go back to the, the blue spot. So he, he has to do more moves to get back to the end of the game. Okay, so the goal is to get through the maze with the least amount of moves possible. So you'd have a scorekeeper, but it's hard keeping store, score and shooting the water gun at the same time. So, all right, Carl, you ready? Yep. Okay. So, Carl, step forward, two spots, two, two spaces. Okay, turn, simple left, one step. That's right. <laughs> Or step to the 
your goal is to to do a game of your own and see how many how many moves it takes you to get through the maze. Have fun. All right, this is our River Run experience and a River Run game, and we challenge you guys to make your own game. Um, one thing I may have forgotten to mention was we required them to step on the blue spaces to get to the end of the maze. They had to direct them through that. So we hope that you guys have a lot of fun and let us know how you do on your creating your game. We would love to see some of the things that you guys create. We'll see you next time on Code Club.